backlogs. We all have them and we all heavily despise them. So this year I am actually planning to do something about it. I am making a video where I'm going to be talking about my 2023 video game resolutions. I've been keeping a list of all the games that I finished throughout the years. So according to this list, I've been actually doing pretty good in terms of how many games that I played each year. And this year, I'm actually going to plan beforehand and do a resolution and kind of like melt down a little bit of the huge backlog of games that I have. So I want to first start with uh, how many games that I finished in every year. So I've been keeping this list since a portion of 2016, but since it's not complete, I will start with 2017. And the way that I make this list is if the game has a story, uh, as long as I finish the story, I consider that game done. For some of these games, I haven't gotten the Platinums. Not all of these games are on the PlayStation platform. And there are some episodic games like the uh, Telltale's Wallace and Gromit series. If I finish one episode from them, I consider that one title finished. Because it is the conclusion of one episode, therefore one story. So this is a pretty much story-based list and that's when I consider when I finish a game. If I finish the story, then I consider that I finished this game. So in 2017 it was 9 games, in 2018 14 games, 2019 10 games, 2020 18 games because of the pandemic we had a lot of free time on our hands, in 2021 it was 15 and 2022 it was 14 games. Well the reason that this year I've completed 14 games is because some of the games that I played were very long. I think the longest one was Dragon Quest 11 S. Echoes of an Elusive Age Definitive Edition and I got the Platinum for this game and it lasted for like 141 hours. That was quite long. Another game that I finished was like Horizon Zero Dawn which was very long. I finished God of War Ragnarok. Yeah, so lots of games. I'm not going to talk about every title that I finished but what I'm going to do here is I have decided on 10 games that I want to play in the year of 2023 and I tried to diversify my list uh, with different platforms to play on so I don't want to necessarily just focus on PlayStation and these are games that I've always wanted to play but it was in my backlog for so long and this will be a good opportunity for me to play them. I have 10 games but there are no order to these uh, titles. I can play them in whichever order that I like. Don't worry about the numbers. The first one is uh, Tell Me Why and it's uh, I'm going to play this on PC. I've been quite interested in this. It's actually been a recommendation by a dear friend and he recommended that game to me when I was talking to him about Life is Strange Before the Storm. So I was telling him that I really like that so he recommended me to play Tell Me Why. I have it ready. I'm going to play it. So that is my uh, PC game and the next game that I have on this list is a game that I'm actually currently playing but since I haven't finished this story I will still consider this a part of um, the 2023 resolution uh, and that is Ghost of Tsushima. I have played like around 49 hours of this. It's a really really good game and it's packed with content so I don't think I will be finishing the story in 2022. I have like five days left of this year um, so I'm going to be playing this in 2023 and I will continue playing it. I'm also planning to platinum it and if I like the multiplayer I'm planning to 100% it. We'll see how that goes but once I finish this story I'll consider this game done. It's a beautiful story and I really really enjoy it. Uh, it was actually gifted to me uh, so yeah I consider myself very lucky and I have the director's cut which has all the content, um, the island of Iki as well so really really good game. Uh, the next one I have on my list uh, is actually my first PlayStation 5 game and that's Elden Ring. I have heard great things about this game, everyone speaks so highly of it. So far my only experience with the Souls games was the first Dark Souls. Uh, I played the remastered version, I've beaten it and I really really enjoyed it. I had a tank build and 
uh, I over leveled my character and kind of lived that power fantasy. Uh, then I played some Bloodborne, which I really liked, but it was kind of spooky for me. So I actually stopped playing it. Maybe I'll play it in the future. It's a really, really good game. Other than that, I haven't tried any other games. I do have some of them, like Demon Souls and Dark Souls 2, 3. But one game that I've been so psyched about was, of course, Elden Ring. I want to join in the bandwagon and enjoy this game like everyone does. Uh, this was also a birthday gift. I have it ready on my PlayStation 5. If you can see it, maybe on the top, it's somewhere there. I'm planning to play this on my PlayStation 5, so that's my... One and only PlayStation 5 game that I'm going to be playing. The next up on my list is a PlayStation 3 game, and that is Spec Ops The Line. I have first heard of this game on a PlayStation Access video, and I believe Holly Bennett was talking about it. She was talking about how this game has a very unexpected story, and I've actually inclu included some story elements of this game on my uh, thesis, like Master's Graduation thesis. I was talking about uh, video game theory and God of War 2018. Certain aspects, certain points of my thesis, I've actually talked about this game, but I've never actually played it myself, so I am really excited to play this. I had it on my Steam, but I really wanted to play it on PlayStation because of the trophies. I really enjoy trophies. So yeah, I'm gonna really enjoy playing this game and I heard from Brett actually uh, on YouTube if you know his channel. He said uh, this, uh, the story in this game really packs a punch. So I'm really really excited for that. This has been on my backlog for as long as I can remember, like at least 2020. So I it's about time that I play this. Uh, the next game that I have on my list has been on my backlog for longer than any of these games on this list and I believe this has been on my to play list since 2012 which was the first time that I learned about the game so that is Sora Torobo the Red Hunter on Nintendo DS. I have played a kind of like the prequel to this game called Tail Concerto or Tail Concerto. I played that game on PlayStation 1 and I actually loved loved the game. The graphics are awesome, the animated cutscenes are beautiful and it's actually one of the few games that I was able to beat when I was young. Um, so I was very excited for this game because the art style is amazing and it is kind of like a hidden gem and not many people talk about it which makes me want to play it even more. I'm in love with the style and I heard very good things about the gameplay as well. Uh, one of my close friends, Raid, if you're watching this, hi, he's also a very big fan of this game. And when we, when him and I first met, I remember he sent me like a sticker of from Sora to Robo and I was like, oh my god, that's Sora to Robo the Red Hunter. And he, he was very surprised that I knew of the game because not many people do. So. Uh, I'm finally ready to play it in the year of 2023. So that was my DS, DS game. So far we've covered PC, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 3, PlayStation 5, Nintendo DS, and next up is a Nintendo Switch game. And it's actually a game that I don't know how I will feel about because I have done as little research as possible, but knowing this company and knowing the developer studio, I think they've done a good job. And that is Shin Megami Tensei 5. And this is the Steelbook Edition. <laughs> I have a funny story of this game actually. Uh, so this is a secondhand game. Uh, I've tried it, it works. I'm really, really excited to play this. The cover is beautiful, and I actually got this from Japan. I used a proxy website, and with all the expenses combined, this game was cheaper than how much it would have cost me if I just bought the regular edition, which was brand new, in Turkey. So there's a leeway there. This is a second-hand game, but it's the Steelbook edition. So. And it's in such a beautiful condition as well. It's just there's a dent in here that is kind of noticeable, but the cover itself is in great condition. And Japanese people are usually really good with preservation. I am looking forward to playing this. I'm a huge fan of the Persona series. I've beaten Persona 5 
I'm at the end of Persona 4 Golden. I played a considerable chunk of Persona 3 Portable, and in my youth I played Devil Summoner 2, and these are the only games that I played in the Shin Megami Tensei Multiverse. In my case, this is going to be the first Shin Megami Tensei game I'm going to play, and I'm going to start with the fir uh, fifth one. I don't know if I should play the prior entries, but I would assume not. As I've said, I've done as little research as possible about these games, but uh, the game is also in English, so when I was buying this from Japan, the seller made it clear that the game was in uh, English, and I've checked it, and even the back side is in English and French, I think. So, I'm really excited for this, and I'm going to play it on my uh, Nintendo Switch. The next up on my list is actually a VR game. Astro's Rescue Mission, I think is the name. That game currently lives in my PlayStation 4 Pro Drive. I will play this game on my PlayStation 5 because that's where my uh, camera is hooked up right now and uh, that's where I feel most comfortable playing. I, again, I heard really good things about this game as well. The thing is, when the pandemic first hit the world, PlayStation had an initiative where they uh, gave some games for free to customers. So I was uh, able to get this uh, game for free, or was it like a part of PlayStation Plus? I'm pretty sure it was free for everyone. So long story short, I got this game and I've only, like even though I had my PlayStation VR for like two, three years, no, like two years, I've only played it once because it's such a hassle to set it up. But I'm going to bite the bullet and I'm going to play Astrobot Rescue Mission. The problem is, VR gives me massive motion sickness, so I hope this game will be better. Actually, I haven't tried a variety of games to be able to decide which kind of games really makes me feel horrible, but this will be a risk I'm willing to take in the year of 2023. The final three games are actually in the games, just because I had a lot of video games that were like very big and very long, like I think Ghost of Tsushima is going to take me a lot of time, so does Elden Ring, and I'm sure Shin Megami Tensei 5 will not be short. That's why for the last three games, I've chosen some experiences that will take me shorter time. Number eight is actually Coffee Talk. Well, I love cozy games. I'm a huge fan of being cozy. I enjoy that feeling a lot. I've been watching a lot of YouTubers recommendation lists for cozy games and Coffee Talk always comes up on those lists. Uh, I believe, as far as I know, it's kind of a visual novel style. There isn't a lot of gameplay there but you make coffees for your patrons and they come and talk to you about their lives, I think. So that should be a lot of fun. I've tried some uh, visual novels. I can't say I'm a huge fan of them, but I really enjoy a good story. So I believe Coffee Talk will give me that. The next one is actually a game that I've started playing years ago, and I still haven't finished, and th that game is called A New Beginning Final Cut. I don't know if Final Cut should be there as a title, but uh, this is a point-and-click adventures game with hand-drawn art. I've seen this game on YouTube from a random uh, YouTube channel, I don't remember, but the visual style really struck me, so that's why I bought it, and I actually started playing it. I really enjoyed the story, but I haven't beaten it yet, so in 2023, I promised myself to finish this game. And the last game is actually Death Store. Death Store is a game that I've been interested in because of the visual style, and there has been some similarities that people have made between Death's Door and Dark Souls. I don't know about that, I will have to play it for myself. And as far as I know, this is not a very long game, so that is the best one for me. Uh, so that's why that's my last choice. So, this is my list, and I hope uh, 2023 will be a good year for me and for everyone. And these are uh, 10 of the games that I plan on playing. I'm sure there will be like other games that really excite me, so I will want to try them. 
One game that I'm also willing to try is another Siberia game. Like, I've played all Siberia games, but I want to go back and play more of them because Siberia is amazing. So, thank you so much for watching. If you are planning to play certain games in 2023, I encourage you to make a list on your own. And actually, you can post it as a comment in the comment section below. I really want to see what kind of games that people play and maybe I can take a look at them and maybe I can also find something that I like that I will add to this list. Let's make um, a game resolution for the year of 2023 and let's see if we can finish them. I'm quite confident in myself when it comes to being able to finish games because when I play video games I only play one game at a time. So. We'll see how it goes. I will definitely do an update when I finish this list or it is the end of 2023. So either way, you're going to get a follow-up video talking about where I am with this list and I hope you look forward to it. So thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in another video. Bye!